Hi everyone. Today we are learning how to use the method of integrating factors to solve an initial value problem in differential equations. To use this method, we have to make sure of two things. First, that the differential equation in the problem is first order, meaning that only the first derivative of the dependent variable with respect to the independent variable shows up. In other words, there can be a dy dt or dy dx, but there cannot be d squared y dx squared or anything higher. The second thing that we must make sure of is that the differential equation in the problem is linear. This means that the dependent variable, in this case y, only shows up as y, not as 1 over y, cosine of y, y squared, etc. y can be multiplied by a nonlinear function of the independent variable, such as cosine of t or t squared, However, y has to remain linear, just as y. The first step is to write out the standard form, which is dy dt plus p of t times y equals g of t. We have to put the differential equation given into this standard form. Above, it is already written in the standard form, so we can keep it as the same. Keep in mind, if there was a constant in front of this y prime, then we would have to divide the entire equation by the constant to get rid of it. Now, the integrating factor, mu of t, is equal to e to the power of the integral of p of t dt. We simply have to memorize this. In this case, our p of t is negative 3 halves. We have to be careful to include the negative because in the standard form has a plus, so therefore p of t holds the negative. Substituting this in, we get mu of t is equal to e to the negative 3 halves t. The third step is to multiply both sides of this differential equations by this integrating factor. I simply re rewrote y prime as dy dt. The next step is to rewrite the left side of the equation which always becomes d dt times mu of t, which is the integrating factor, times y. So in this case, it becomes d dt times e to the power of negative 3 halves t times y, and we set that equal to what it was in step 3. Now we integrate with respect to t on both sides, so this part just simply becomes what's inside. When we integrate the right side, we add plus c to the right side. Then we simply divide by the integrating factor, which is e to the negative 3 halves t, on both sides to solve for y. By dividing both sides by e to the negative 3 halves t, we get the general solution. y equals negative 2 minus 4 e to the t plus c e to the 3 halves t. Now, to find the particular solution of the problem, we use the initial condition given, y of 0 is equal to y naught, and we substitute in y naught for y and 0 for t. We get negative 6 plus c is equal to y naught. Therefore, c is equal to y naught plus 6. We substitute y naught plus 6 for c into the general solution to find the particular solution. And that's the answer to the problem. There are a few calculus simplification methods that become useful when solving with integrating factors. The first is when you have e to the power of ln of something, the e and ln cancel each other out, and the term simply becomes what was inside of the ln. When you have a constant in front of an ln term, you can bring that constant to the power of the ln term. After doing so, e and ln cancel out, as we just discussed, and the term becomes what's inside of the ln to the power of the constant. Finally, when you divide a constant c by a number or a term with variables, that c then becomes a different type of c. So from that point on, you have to rewrite that C as C1 or C2. You can't just call it C. You have to rename it. Thanks, everyone, for watching this video. Hopefully it helped you. And stay tuned for more helpful math videos.